Spencer Linton. He is Austin Colley. We continue our coverage and reaction to the news that Mark Pope is now officially the next head coach at Kentucky and leaving a major void for BYU and their head coaching job. Joining us now is one of the best college basketball analysts in all the land. He is in the heart of Big 12 country and teams. Fran Fraschilla is back with us. Fran, how are you this fine morning? Uh, all is good, Spencer. I'm not far from you guys in Colorado Springs. It's a beautiful, crisp morning here. And uh, I thought I was going to, you know, kind of chill out after the Final Four. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, you know, but I don't have anything to do other than observe from a distance. And it's just a mind blowing last 24 hours. Yeah, you said it. Uh, it's been a wild <laughs> ride. So if you could sum it up uh, as you do so eloquently often, Fran. How does something like this happen where Mark Pope is now the next head coach at Kentucky? Well, I'll work in reverse order. Uh, he's the next head coach at Kentucky because he did a fabulous job at BYU and before that at Utah Valley. But in point of fact, I woke up yesterday morning thinking, damn, I'm losing my good friend uh, Scott Drew to Kentucky. Good for him. And then by the end of the day, before I hit my head on the pillow, I was like, Damn, my good friend Mark Pope is going back home to Kentucky. So, uh, you know, hey, it just shows you the power of the Big 12, I guess. But but really, uh, Kentucky was in a bind, and they found a guy, in my opinion, that um, as hard as it is for Coop fans to realize that he's gone, you know, he's, he, you know, he, great legacy at Kentucky, great human being, as you guys know well, uh, tremendous coach, uh, mentor, and, you know, he, he's a part of the history of University of Kentucky basketball as a captain and uh, national champion. So in a weird way, it fits. And ironically, there's a lot of Kentucky fans that probably aren't thrilled today. But as long as Mark can keep the recruiting in place, and I don't mean this class, but if he can utilize the resources at Kentucky, coaching is not going to be an issue for him in the SEC, without a doubt. And being a great human being is going to help him with the Kentucky fan base. So, Fran, I, I, I got to ask you, not a lot of people had, uh, especially no. Kentucky fans, had Mark Pope on their bingo card for next head coach, okay, <laughs> filling yes. that vacancy. Yeah. At what yeah. point did you feel like Mark Pope was an absolute, you know, legitimate candidate? Uh, you know, late, late yesterday afternoon, Austin, honestly, you know, because um, they went through the list of guys with maybe more accolades more history in their coaching career when you throw out names like, uh, you know, Scott Drew and Billy Donovan. Obviously, those guys have been around a while. But, you know, it kind of reminds me of, like, the NBA draft. You know, Scott Drew is the four-year guy proven. You know he's going to be really good because he's done it. Whereas Mark Pope's like the lottery pick. He's got a smaller resume, but you look at a guy with great potential. And so, honestly... Late yesterday afternoon, as I was kind of reading my Twitter, which is how I get my news every day, yep. um, I was like, wow, I think this this might actually be a fit. And, you know, you not only want somebody to say yes to you if you're the athletic director, Mitch Barnhart, but in this case, you not only got a guy that says yes, but he knows Kentucky. You know, he lived it. He, he worked, he played for a great coach. He's part of an incredible team in 1996. He was the captain of that team. You know, obviously was good enough to then play in the NBA. So that's when it hit me like this is probably more realistic than trying to wait for Billy Donovan. And uh, so it happened fast. There's no question. I would have given you that those odds that he would have been the coach yesterday morning. But uh, Kentucky was in a unique spot. And we may look back on this in 15 years and say, boy, did they get lucky that they got Mark Pope to be their head coach. On the other hand, you know, it's a risk because Mark doesn't have quite the resume of some of the others. But as someone who's observed him up close, I think he's got everything it takes to be successful there. The fabulous Fran Fraschilla is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Naturally, Fran, now BYU fans are left wondering, well, who in the world is going to be the next head coach at BYU? Because it is such a unique place that typically requires a unique set and backdrop to fit that vacancy at a, a, an institution that's so closely tied to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So who's on your short list to become BYU's next head coach? Well, as of this morning, I would have said Mad Dog. You know, I got to I know I love Mark Matson. Uh, I can remember a few years ago when he was a candidate for the BYU job. 
without a lot of with with no head coaching experience. I believe he interviewed, uh, and they yeah they went with. Am I right about that? Yeah, Spencer? yeah, yeah. Yeah, he interviewed. And, and I remember because we were talking. You know, Mark's become a, a, a Mark. Mark and I are not close friends, but we're friends. And he called me about you know being a head coach at the college level. And ironically enough, the way it worked out perfectly for everybody was Mark Pope left Utah Valley uh, to go to BYU, and then Mark Matson went to Utah Valley and got great experience as a head coach. Now I understand this morning. I know he's got the big buyout, and I also know that he kind of reaffirmed his commitment to Cal. So I don't know if that's off the table yet. Um, you guys would know better if the, the pressure maybe to come back home, not only to the to BYU, but to the church. But as of right now, it seems to me he may not be a candidate. So after that, it's kind of wide open. I will say this, and I'm not shilling for anybody uh, because I don't know all the people that are, you know, uh, basketball people closely connected to the church, you know, as you guys do. Sure. But I just spent a few days with Chris Burgess uh, out in uh, at the NIT and coached against Chris when he played at Utah when I was at New Mexico and know his reputation. And I, I think I know his reputation even at BYU. And, uh, you know, again, maybe a gamble, but he seems to have all the right stuff. And again, not endorsing Chris, but just as an observer saying, I think this guy's, and I even told him last week, you're going to be a really good head coach, and I hope you get the right opportunity. So maybe this is it. I'm sure he'll get a look because of his connection to BYU. But other than that, you know, it's going to be tricky because you've got a good team coming back. And, it's, you know, the, I think the quicker, the better, but not quick enough to make a bad decision. Uh, you know, I think I think your administration, athletic administration, is very uh, competent and clued into what has to get done quickly. So that's what I was going to ask you, Fran. What, what do you think, how do you think this affects BYU's on the court production next year? How do you think it affects their top 25 preseason pool? Are they going to drop a lot? Where do you see them ranked? Uh, yeah, like what, what, what do you expect from the Cougars next year with this move? Well, I think Austin, you know, obviously uh, hiring somebody quickly, but the right guy is critical. And I think you need. I think BYU is unique only in the sense that um, when you when you choose BYU, you're not just choosing the basketball, which is obviously a big part of it, but just the, you know, the the connection to the church and and uh, the values of the school. So, you know, if they can keep if they can keep most everybody in place, and of course, Colin Chandler is going to be important here. The right guy is going to if he can keep everybody in place, they're going to be very very good. But this next 24, 48, 72 hours, um, critical. Uh, and not only to picking a coach, but making sure that, you know, Tom and, and Brian and the admi administration go to the players and say, we're going to find somebody that fits us, fits our values. And um, who that is, I don't know yet, but you have, to be you have to be in constant communication with this team. I would say this about BYU compared to many universities when it comes to basketball. Because of the Mormon mission and the fact that you get guys back from their missions, you've got a very mature group of young people, maybe more so than other places, that understand what's going on right now. Maybe a little bit different than a 19-year-old freshman. Sure. So that, that could help. But again, you know, speed and alacrity. I, I like that word. I don't use that often. <laughs> Look at you. It's, 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 someone it's did critical. their someone did their wordle today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean I think that's critical, obviously, to to find the right person, but do as quickly as possible because the program is in great shape right now. Fran, it wasn't that long ago that you were rocking that head coaching title. You know, you know <laughs> this and you you've seen the evolution of how the game has evolved with NIL and just the whole approach to recruiting is totally different than it was even 10 to 15 years ago. So knowing what you know and having your head coaching experience and being around these young guys still today, what's priority number one for whoever the new head coach is? Let's say uh, Chris yeah. Burgess or whoever gets hired. What's agenda item number one? Well, you rec you re-recruit your own players, you know, regardless. I mean, not only, I wouldn't say it's changed in the last 15 years. I think NIL's changed in the last three. It's sure, a completely yeah. new normal, different world. You know, uh, Austin knows even on the football side how that's going. But um, you, whenever you take over a, a job for the first time, when I say that, I mean you get a job, like let's say the new coach at BYU. 
wouldn't matter if it was NIL or not. The first responsibility is to re-recruit the players that are already committed to the university. Oftentimes, they're committed because of who the head coach was, but more often than not, they're committed for a variety of reasons, and, and a big part of it is the university, the basketball program, uh, the lifestyle, you know, the community. And so you have whoever gets the job is going to have to re-recruit the team immediately and make sure that there is a connection there between the guys that have already sweated for BYU and your connection to them. And again, you know, I think of Chris only because I know he's just just recently removed from the culture at BYU and understands it. And I'm sure there's others, you know, uh, Barrett Peavy's name has come up. Um, there may, might be some guys on the staff that, you know, could have, uh, you know, uh, head coaching in their future. But connecting to the current players is the first priority. Their families as well, reaching out to them and then um, and keeping them together. Because after that, it kind of everything else falls into place. Recruiting NIL, um, you know, summer workouts, getting ready for the season, scheduling. All that will fall into place once the connection with the current players is made. Fran, you are a scholar and a gentleman, and we appreciate your insight into this crazy college basketball coaching carousel. We wish you the best on the rest of your day in Colorado Springs. Let's talk again soon, if you don't mind. Always a pleasure, Spencer. We'll do it. And Austin, all the best. We'll talk yeah, to you soon. Great to well. have you. You got it. The awesome Fran Fraschilla with us on BYU Sports.